Okay, so in this video, we are going to look at how to solve for the empirical formula when you are doing your dividing and you do not get whole numbers. Okay, so it's just one extra layer of tricky. Here we go. So empirical formulas, remember you're trying to find the simplest version of the molecular formula. You're trying to find that simplest version of your formula, okay? But what happens when you do your dividing and you're getting answers that are not whole numbers? Okay, because for chemical formulas, you have to have whole numbers. All right, so let's look at an example. Okay, so you might have an example like this. Okay, a sample of a product was found to have 4.15 grams of aluminum and 3.692 grams of oxygen. Solve for the empirical formula. Okay, so what I do with this is just like any other empirical formula problem, okay? Use my five steps. So step one, if necessary, change percent to grams. Well, sweet. This question gives me everything in grams already, so that step is not necessary. Step two, right, because I'm already in grams. So step two is convert grams of each element into moles. Use your molar mass. Cool, so I'm gonna do this for both aluminum and for oxygen. So I have 4.151 grams of aluminum and 3.692 grams of oxygen. And I'm just gonna use my molar mass. So molar mass of aluminum is 26, 26.98 grams one mole and oxygen is 16 for one mole okay. grams cancel out and I type in my calculator and I get 0 0.1539 moles and I get 0 0.2308 moles of oxygen, okay? Ugh, <laughs> not nice numbers, but whatever, right? We roll with it, even if you got some weird decimals. Empirical formulas can give you some weird decimals, okay? Just roll with the punches, all right? Then, okay, we convert it to moles. Step three, divide all moles by the smallest number. Okay, so I'm going to look at all my answers, everything's in moles, I'm going to divide by my smallest number. So I have 0 0.15, 0 0.23, 1, 1, 1.5 is smaller than 0.23, so I'm going to divide both by 0 0.1539, divide by 0 0.1539, and I get an answer for aluminum, I get one, and for oxygen, I get 1.5. Okay, this is a problem because I cannot have, right, if I, if I had this, I would have a formula that was like this, Al with a one, oxygen 1 1.5, okay? That doesn't exist. What is 1.5 of an oxygen atom? No one knows, because it's not real, okay? So, if I get this, then I have my step four. If necessary, multiply answers to get whole numbers, okay? In this case, it's necessary. So, I need to multiply these things to get a whole number, right? Here's a nice little trick. I'll do it on a... Decimal... Multiply by. Okay, so if you have a decimal that ends in 0.5, then you're going to multiply by 2 to get a whole number. If you have a decimal that ends in 0.3, then you're going to multiply by 3 to get a whole number. If you have a decimal that ends in 0.25, multiply by 4 to get a whole number. Okay, these are the most typical. Very rarely you might get a 0.67. Okay, then you would multiply by 1.5. That's unusual. OK? 
okay? Typically, you'll have these three situations. So if you can remember, if you have a decimal that ends in 0.5, multiply by 2, 0.3, multiply by 3, 0.25, multiply by 4, okay? And if you're nerdy and you want to know why, probably not, but whatever, here we go. Because 0.5 as a fraction, right, is 1 half. So if I would 1 half times 2, I get a whole number 1. Okay, 0.3 is 1 third. So if I said 1 third times 3, I get 1. This is 1 fourth, you get it. 1 fourth times 4 is 1. 0.67 is 2 thirds. So that's why we need to multiply by 3 halves, or 1.5, right? So that's depending on how good you are with math or how you like math or whatever. If fractions are your thing instead of decimals, maybe this will help you remember what to multiply by, okay? If you're not a fraction person, I hear you, okay? Just memorize. If you have 0.5 as a decimal, multiply by 2. 0.3 by 3, 0.25 by 4. Those are your most difficult, okay? All right. So I've got those sweet rules, and I have one, and I have a 1.5. So I have, aha, a decimal that ends in a 0.5, which means 0.5s, I'm going to multiply by 2. Okay, so I'm going to take this, let me smell that color. I'm going to multiply by 2, I'm going to multiply by 2. Okay, so 1 times 2 is 2, 1.5 times 2 is 3. So this means I'm going to have, for my empirical formula, because now I have whole numbers, right? So now I'm just going to put the subscripts in for the formula, right? That's step five. So I will have AL2, O3. AL203, aluminum oxide. Yay! Okay, that's the empirical formula. Good luck.